Allez. the hour of 3 o'clock Central Daylight Time. Welcome back to the uh, Friday edition, at least for this week, of the uh, Bumper to Bumper program on a balmy. Although even going to get even balmier Saturday and Sunday, weekend afternoon here in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. My name is Dan Barrero. I am back for the second, no, third, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I guess it'll be fourth consecutive day. Garzi is back for the second in a row, and we're uh, delighted that you are prepared I hope for the next three and one half hours. Is it possible? We're preempted today by an extended Timberwolves pregame show. It's possible, but it's not happening. Not, 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 not happen. yet. Right around the corner, though. You think secretly Fallness is actually relieved and delighted that he basically gets the rest of the spring off? That... Don't have to worry about, you know, filling those lo- lengthy pre- and right. post-game shows, Seven to finding 30. guests, the yeah. meat grinder, all that. We'll go to the ball center. Tom Reed will join us. He'd yeah. never admit it, but I is it possible that secretly he's actually quite delighted to have the rest of the spring off? I think it's possible. I think it's possible. Oh, in his defense, to the defense, the last decade or so, he's only been like an extra week and a half. Well, yeah, it's, 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 not, it's like not been a marathon. It's not, like he's, it's not like he's gone to Memorial Day. Not been a marathon. No, That's very, we had a couple true, runs where you got to like mid-May. Yeah. So let's say the Wolves thing starts developing into a marathon or a semi-marathon. What kind of plans do we have? Are we going to be doing shows regularly from the cage? I think we should. Are we going to be doing bringing back Wolves after dark? I think we should. I, I do. If this, if this, now that's a big if. But if this thing takes off a little bit, because the wild, you know, the 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 clash for airtime is no over. Conflicts. There are no remaining conflicts other than the first day of the draft, right? Which is uh, two weeks from yesterday. Other than that, it's it's 
the world, the, the KFN world is, is the Timberwolves oyster. Think about it. Right? Yes. It's wide open. There ain't nothing else. We got, we don't have any access to Twins games. We do, don't we have some access to the Saints or is that on the plus? It's on the plus, but we can do stuff with them. That's true. Yes. That's so, true. So as like well. Sunday games are heard on the fan usually. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, we gotta, we gotta, oh, we'll be ready. Batting down the hatches. Yeah, you know, you, we did Seasonal some stuff boost. while you were in Maui. We got some you, stuff in place. You had some place. stuff in place. We're, we're talking. Oh, good. That's good. And I think I was just having this conversation. Even if they are the late tip-off games, like 8 and 8.30, which they will be because we're technically yeah, in the West. Yeah, that's the problem. Not really, though, because the Skyway fills up. The the Wolves fans show up in the Skyway hours before the oh, game. Oh, that's a good point. They it sit there. Yeah, they, they, and they're well, they ready have, to go. They have a place to show up yes. in a way that, that does not exist at the X off of Gate 4. Typically, yeah. Yeah, that's so true. So there's a place to go if well, we need the, to. There was a time, I think when we would do shows from outside the X for playoff games, and it was like 70 degrees. They had the block parties. Then people would show up mm-hmm. a little bit. Yep. But we don't know if you can count, continue to count on those temperatures. So we'll see how that goes. We hope that um, indeed works out. Uh, by the way, uh, for the record, Tim Conley did finally get back to me regarding my snarky text to him that yes. I mentioned on air yesterday about you're not going to um, invoke that out in your contract after this season, are you? <laughs> And when I hadn't heard back from him like for three hours later, then I texted again and said that was a joke because then I start wondering, was he annoyed? Yeah. And um, you predicted it. He wasn't annoyed, he said. It was he he had just finished a major scouting trip to Europe. Okay. And was trying to spend some quality time with the family. He's a father first. No question. He's a family man. Exactly it. Every so, response to everything I is family. I think we'll probably have some access to him uh, once the the postseason begins. A regular season wraps up tonight on the fan. No, against, Sunday it does. Ex- well, I was going to I was going to yeah. just say back to back wrap ups. I was going to say we this go. weekend is the wrap up. Give me a chance. Um, we're wrapping up the season with games tonight and on Sunday. Uh, both of them will be on the fan, um, including the Sunday game against Phoenix, which potentially might not matter, but I think, mathematically speaking, chances are it will matter to at least one of the teams. And then the question is, do you care if, if, the, if the Wolves' position is already cemented? I, I don't know if mathematically the Wolves' position can be cemented before the, uh, the Sunday game, but uh, the wrap-up weekend is tonight and Sunday, and... Carl Anthony Towns is expected to play tonight. Will he start tonight? I it, it's not a it's not like it matters to me all that much. Um but it'll be interesting to see what approach they take. One would assume, you know, he ain't gonna play forty minutes tonight. Do they want him though he's a starter? They want to get him ready for the postseason. They say, no, we're putting him yeah, if he's ready, we're gonna start him. He's a starter, he's cat. And then we play him what, twenty I don't know, twenty five minutes tonight, you think? I don't know what the deal would be, but yeah. it, it, it I think makes sense to try to get him on the court and then see what you got, perhaps, uh, if something significant is at stake on Sunday. Because as as I remember it, we can slide as low. We can go still as high as one. We can yep. finish as high as one. We can also finish as low as three. Right. And um, a lot depends on, I think, um, tonight, Denver is in San Antonio Davy, if I'm not mistaken. And the Thunder hosts the Giannisless Bucks. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because yeah. theoretically, if the Wolves won tonight and the Thunder lost, they would be. We would. They be would guarantee two, no worst. lower than two. Yeah, right. Because we hold the tiebreaker over Oklahoma City. Right. And they play Sunday afternoon against the Mavs. Same bit. Okay. At same time as us, two thirty. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun to, yeah. It's so foreign to have these discussions. Spurs are weird. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Wemby goes off tonight. You know, maybe Denver takes it for granted a little bit. I, I haven't. Maybe we I, took it out of them. So I haven't much. checked uh, what the Spurs have been up to lately. How how well you know they have performed, or whether they literally are in. We're done, and you know we're playing regulars. 20, 21 minutes a night. They're now. five and five in their last ten. That's that not, well, that's not bad. No, it's better than their season by far has gone. They're bad twenty and far. sixty. Um, twenty and sixty. A lot of people, guards, and I think you were included in this group. Uh, said it would never last, and um, I'm wondering how you feel about that today. If you feel any measure of guilt 
that you were um, that snarky about the Golden Bachelor star Jerry Turner mm. and his lovely wife Teresa Nist, or is it pronounced Nist? You know, no N I S T. Unfortunately, I don't know. Apparently. <laughs> After three months of matrimony, the Golden Bachelor couple have officially announced that they are divorcing. Sorry, K fan. You recall? Uh, didn't we have a semifinalist locally? Didn't we have? Didn't we have a gal? Wasn't it uh, FEMA? It's FEMA's ex-wife. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Was was. The runner-up, was she not? I think so, yeah. So now, does that mean he... You hand the medal he down? He proposes to her? Maybe. And she says, oh, now, now you want me. Okay, well, I'm not so sure at this point. What are the rules? What are the Golden Bachelor <laughs> matrimonial rules? Like, we have rules or we that we have learned about, you know, seating and tiebreakers and all that for the NBA playoffs. What are the Golden Bachelor rules when the, the original couple, he picked... This woman, nice, and three months later they said, not going to work. And they sent out this statement, what are the rules next? Can, can he ask the next gal? Is there anything stopping him? I don't think in so. In the rules from asking her, hey, would you give me a mulligan? You were right. I was wrong. Let's give it a try. I think he could do it. I just don't think anyone's going to televise it. I think they're going to have to do their own streaming service on that one. Like, well, we care, yeah. right? Because they've had the big moment of truth. They've had the big unveiling. They've had the big marriage. Now, and now it's over. What I've said, th th there's a couple of interesting nuggets in this piece uh, in, by Jenna Ross in the Star Tribune. Um, the, the <laughs> Here's my favorite uh, sentence. Well, sentence says, they married in a l lavish live broadcast wedding in January. Was it going to be anything but lavish? But they never moved in together. Oh, no. <laughs> so they both apparently looked at homes in New Jersey and South Carolina, but never got to the point where we made that decision. Now, I'm chuckling because I've always felt as fascinated as I have been by this pop cultural phenomenon, and I have been. Now, we haven't covered it as extensively as we once did on this show. But I'm, I'm still fascinated by it. What, what, what fascinates me the most is the degree to which, as this story indicates, people have tried to take this nonsense, these, these weddings, seriously. They're almost like they're reporting it like, name two real people who, without cameras, got together and stay together for six months or a year or five years and got divorced. So maybe famous, maybe not. That These stories are treated similarly like, like forgetting that all of this is make-believe. All of this is manufactured. All of this is, you could say, harmless, made for TV fun, but it's still reported in the fashion of getting a divorce, which would seem to indicate a belief that it was real. Do people need to believe it's real? The people who watch it all the time, which I don't anymore, is that what they need? I think is so. It's sort of like pro wrestling where you have, to, you, have to, you have to buy the, oh, God, these emotions are real. and There's really something at stake here. When we've learned over and over again that the essence of reality TV is there's nothing real about it. It is 95% manufactured, um, including the drama, including a lot of the controversies because they've been told or they know it implicitly. We ain't going to be much of a show if there's no conflict or controversy. So even if we don't hate each other, like other bachelorettes don't despise each other, we got to act like we despise each other because that's the only way people are going to come back and watch it and go, you see what, what, she, what she did to that other gal? Yeah. That's got to be part of the deal. But it's a headline. Golden Bachelor couple announced they are divorcing. Now, if real-life couple, who's the tight end for the uh, Chiefs? Travis Kelsey? Yes. And Taylor Swift? Yes. 
If they were to get married, and that, I'm guessing, would be a lavish oh. wedding, would it not? We'll spend a whole segment on it on Enough Said. <laughs> at least, entire block. At we least might it go might be, there. Yeah, well, we might be on location. It's possible. Um, is there any chance that it would last just as long, three months, that 90 days later it would be over? Any chance? No, it'll last longer. Longer than that. that. But not necessarily forever. Not necessarily forever. Interesting. All right, let's do this. Let's break. Now that I got that out of the way, and um, I didn't mean to, like, again, I may have done, I sh maybe should have done a spoiler alert on this. On the Golden Bachelor? Wanted to find it out in your own way, on your own time. If you are grieving, text us and let us know how you're dealing with it, and we'll do our best to be as Hold sensitive on. as we always are. When we come back... We know Carl Anthony Towns is returning tonight. He's yes. listed as questionable right. against Atlanta. Who else is returning to Target Center tonight that might make things extremely interesting and uncomfortable? Well, I'm going to go with either Glue Gal or A Rod. You got one of them right. I set up interviews. The interviews were they came to our hope, my house. And uh, talked with uh, Becky and I, you know, Becky, she had to cook him a meal or else she wouldn't talk to him. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, we kept it at a, a very social uh, uh, level. As it worked out, what they wanted to talk about is the same things I wanted to talk about. They wanted to talk about the people, the players, the individuals. And they, and they kept it on that level. Uh, that was different than most everybody else in uh, the conversations. Was that about the time that Glenn Taylor was confirming that he had entered into an agreement with Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez to begin a not-so-swift transition of ownership? <laughs> That was September of 2021. Glenn being the majority owner to Glenn being out, right? I don't think he was going to remain as minority owner, or was he? Was he going to be my owner? I don't know. He might have had some stake. Maybe he still had some stake. I'm sure he was going to get his seats and some perks. Um, it was lovey-dovey, you recall, back then. It's not so lovey-dovey any longer, as we have uh, discussed repeatedly, and we'll continue to track the ownership pissing match but tonight um there will be obviously all eyes on carl anthony towns returning to the club returning to the, the the court he's been with the club but returning to the court for the first time in what about five weeks since the uh, knee injury he's scheduled or expected to play Today, or tonight, I should say, and may play as well again the final regular season game on Sunday. Um, but all eyes won't just be on how Cat looks, how he moves. There will be eyes, not far from center court, but certainly court side seats, because apparently, according to uh, Johnny Athletic, Alex Rodriguez, the now much hated. In Glenn Taylor circles, Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie will return to Target Center, presumably to sit in their own courtside seats. I mean, it's there's no chance that when they try to get to their seats, an usher will say, excuse me, sir. Credential, please. Um, these seats uh, are not, we do not have those seats reserved for you today. Uh, in fact, Mr. Town's father will be sitting in this seat. Oh, yeah. And we He'll have, be back tonight, I guess. You would think. Throwing out T-shirts. We'll, uh, we'll, we do, we do have a couple of nice spots for you on our second level. That can't happen, can it? I mean, because there's still minority owners of the club, right? They, they have right now. Is it forty percent? I think it's thirty six percent. Okay. And Glenn said at the time they're they can keep it. This is the first time they will have shown up for a game since all of this unraveled, correct? According to the Johnny Athletic uh, story that I just skimmed, the, since the March 28th dispute began, right. this is the first time they will be back in the building. And that what that's what makes it juicy and what will make it quite tantalizing. Here's my question to you. If you're not going to the game, you are at the mercy, and, you, and you're interested... 
you're at the mercy of how Bally Sports North <laughs> is going to cover it. Oh. So my gut tells me they will try to pretend it hasn't happened or I, nothing has happened. Yeah. Or, oh, there's A-Rod. He's in the usual spot. Fon Lori right down from him. Yep. And uh, is A-Rod's gal coming? I don't know if Johnny confirmed that or not. All right. I would assume yes. They're Probably typically true. together there. Yeah. So, I mean, who's sideline reporter tonight? Is it Leah B? I don't know who it is. I'll check. W- will they have Leah B attempting to interview? That, that would show me something. It really would. That they said, well, we got to cover the story. They're back for the first time, you know, and 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 we've got to give a Rod a chance to speak. Then you go to Glenn. I mean, here's what you do if you got, especially if it ends up being a boring game, a blowout, like the Wolves are way ahead. Yes, you do the back and forth that us jackals always used to do, where the coach talking right after a game would rip a player. A la Bill Blair ripping Isaiah Ryder, if you want to go far back enough in Wolves history, then we go to the locker room and say, excuse me, Isaiah, I'm wondering if you have any reaction to what Bill Blair had to say about you not showing up tonight. And then you get what Ryder says, you go back to Blair. Same thing tonight. It should be Leah B. Olson. You start with A-Rod, because, right, the latest salvo came from Glenn's side. You go, you, you give A-Rod a chance to respond. He pops off. Then, next time out, you go and grab Glenn and say, uh, Mr. Taylor, here's what A-Rod's reaction was to the leakage a couple of days ago, that the stuff you leaked to Woj bomb, or to Woj, and he is responding in this way. Do you have a response to his response? This could be, it'd be a great opportunity, but I'm not sure I'm going to be holding my breath. My question is, do they even show them? That's the next question. I would question. guess they probably don't. Well, but in some shots, you can't help but see them. Course, you're saying yeah. kind of focus on them. Because they haven't missed an opportunity to show them courtside the last two plus years, <laughs> no, right? Haven't. I mean, they've had them up with no, Jim Pete haven't. and Michael Grady, and A-Rod's been talking about how great Minnesota is, and Mark laurie has been doing the yeah. same thing. I want them to do like oh, the alternate broadcast, you know, you get for like the national championship game or the final four, almost like a, like a, a Manning brothers cast where you've got the game on the, you know, one side. Yeah. Then you've got the split screen. Like we do for enough said, they should have Glenn and Becky, yes, yes. Mark and Alex, and then the game and have it all on one screen because I don't, I'm not going to the game tonight. I'm trying to go to the game. now. I want to see this. We all do. I want to be there for this. And so, I don't think it's going to work out, but I want to see it. I, I don't. My eyes wouldn't leave those guys. Will there be like any sort of mean stares? Because Glenn's on one side of the court, usually, yeah, right, yeah, near the bench, and A Rod and Lori are on the opposite side, and you're just doing those, you know, like those, those, just those the crusty looks, looks. Of, looks of love. Yeah. Oh, this could be. This could be great. Here's the problem, though. We're going to lose to the Hawks. Anthony's got an illness. He's questionable, We're going to end too. up with the third seed. We're going to get the third seed because of these guys. I'm worried about this. Who are we going to play? Who's six? Uh, six right Phoenix? now. Six right now is the Pelicans. Phoenix is a game behind them. Pels worry me a little bit, too. They do. When they got, when they got the big man, uh, Zion. Zion, healthy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Ingram's a We don't a really have an answer for that. For Nobody him. does. He's, when he the, plays, he plays great. The issue is just whether he can stay healthy for seven games, but yeah. This is incredible. Remember when Rosas showed up for game one of the playoffs? Right. Or the play-in good. game, I think That's it right. was. That's right. He used his Knicks credential to get in. That's it. Oh, they were pissed about that. <laughs> oh, they were mad about <laughs> they, that. <laughs> oh, this is so good. It's well, unbelievable. You can't, like I said, you can't ban him. I don't think you can. I don't think you can ban him. And if you do, then you've made an even bigger story yes, out of it. Yes, exactly and then you right. You got a real problem. So wow, um, I like a lot of people were wondering. Okay, when was this going to happen? I, I thought it was inevitable that they were going to show up, uh, but apparently tonight is indeed going to be the night. Bratch on Brian K. Fan text line is wide open. Lots of text coming in. Six four six eight six. Two reasons to watch the Wolves tonight. Carl Anthony Towns is returning to Target Center to play, and according to Johnny. Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie are returning to Target Center courtside seats to watch. This could be a delicious night.
We want to hear from you. You can send us your draft-related talkbacks all day long. And if you're selected as our draft talkback of the day, you'll win a pair of passes to the Miller Lite Vikings draft party. For a full list of details, head to KFAN.com keyword contest. Draft coverage on the fan presented locally by Pep's Draft House Pizza. Well, now you got me thinking about going to the game. Not with a ticket, with a like a media credential. Well, we'll see. We'll see how this thing goes. I'm afraid it'll all end up being very anticlimactic, though. Probably, but you never know. <laughs> well, they're not going to brawl. What if they glue themselves to the floor? Well, that's been discussed. I, I, I mentioned this to morning. The um, is it? What are the odds that that A Rod might hire Glue Gal <laughs> to disrupt things during our first or second? Playoff game. Um, on that note, Jaime in Woodbury, or is it Jamie? A good reality show would be Bachelor, Beauty and the Beast, where Glenn and A Rod try to convince the fans to vote for who should own the Wolves. That's Jr. from Woodbury. Matt in Edina, Chicken Bleep Taylor is not going to show up. Wow. I'd be surprised if he didn't. Or maybe they're coming tonight because they know Glenn's not. 3-2-0 guy's got a better idea than uh, A-Rod hiring Glue Gal. Any chance KG sits with A-Rod and just shouts profanities across the court the whole game? That would be, that's the home run. That's the grand slam. Instead of bringing his gal, A-Rod brings as his special guest number 21 Kevin Garnett to sit with him. You want to talk about scowls and just you know nonverbal communication, facial expressions. Yeah. JG or JG, you're JG. KG is the best at that. Imagine him just sending angry daggers at at the owner of the club the entire ball game. He has enough energy and pettiness as well where he yeah. could sit <laughs> across and not move his eyes away from Glenn. That's it. He would sit there the yes, whole game the whole and not game. watch one second of not the action. Not watch any of it. Just stare at Glenn. That's what he would do. <laughs> that would be really, really... Come fourth quarter. Bring it to the ticket. God, that would be good. 64686 is the Bradshaw and Brian K. Fan text line. If you're just joining us, uh, we're bouncing off of the story dropped by our guy Johnny Athletic that the inevitable is taking place tonight. You knew it was going to happen at some point. But tonight, for the first time since the ownership kerfuffle emerged involving the Wolves, um, Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie are slated to return to Target Center for the Wolves game tonight against the Atlanta Hawks. And um, the, we presume they'll be in their usual seats, which are courtside. Um, is Rosen going to be? Maybe Rosen will sit next. Oh, Rosen's out of town. Is that right? He's with Mitas's dad in Vegas. Vegas during their Vegas thing. But there's a lot of flights. He could wow. come back. If we took a, if we took a poll, if I set up a Twitter poll, which I haven't done in forever, and probably should do more often because it's kind of fun. They're good harmless. For They're not scientific, and they are good for engagement. Yep. Asking. Who, which ownership group do you prefer? Which ownership group do you want to win this particular pissing match? I don't think there's any question that the new guys would win it. Yes. The question I think worth discussing is by how much? Would it be 80-20? Would it be 75-25? And there is an X factor here because... There may be reasons why you like the with it and wow new guys, okay? And are tired of the old guy, okay? The old um, familiarity breeds contempt at some point. Even if you're doing a good job, people get tired of coaches that are really good. They get tired of quarterbacks that are really good, whatever, and even owners. And I wouldn't call Glenn Taylor's stewardship here great. Um, but there's a, there's a significant but here. If the new guys ain't got the money, if that's what ultimately is revealed then it doesn't matter the with it and wow stuff it's it's if it's smoke and mirrors ultimately then you have an issue and as we 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 got into this a little bit yesterday and we talk about it a lot on enough said tonight at uh, Fox 9 930 on 9 tough time with the wolves in action tonight so DVR it if you'd like you can get ahead of it though it's also 730 on Fox 9 plus is that 
it's interesting the way this latest Woj bomb was characterized because the way he wrote it was that part of the reason Glenn Taylor decided he needed to stop the sale was information that came to him via the documents indicating that the Timberwolves' new owners were going to cut payroll for j just under the sal the um, luxury, luxury tax, tax threshold. threshold for next season. Now that's a sobering thought. If it's a sobering accusation, if it's true, I don't know that it's confirmed that it is. I think it's a little little grayer than that. But in all honesty. It, it, it takes this story into a whole new realm, once again, that, that, that indicates to me that Glenn Taylor is just going to try to find any way he can to, to, to go back on the deal because he is suffering from buy, seller's remorse. Because, as I understand it, if you enter in an, into an agreement and the other side fulfills all aspects of said agreement, then it's irrelevant from an arbitrator's standpoint what the new guys may or may not do as soon as next year with the payroll, right? That's That can't be a reason for them to rule in favor of Glenn Taylor. The reason to rule in, in, in favor of Glenn Taylor has to be that the agreement was, is it abrogated? Is that the right term? Violated? Whatever it is, that, that they didn't meet the terms, right? The other stuff, it can't be about Glenn Taylor's whims or my fears because we're back to you're the guy who 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 – had broke bread with them, had Becky make the burgers, and made it sound like these guys are different. And I know these guys. I look. I do, I do business transactions all the times, and I feel that this is different. You're the guy that entered into entered entered into all of this with them, and so it 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 can't be about other things that you may or may like about what they do with the team going forward. Right? That has nothing to do. I, it shouldn't have anything to do. With whatever panel is ultimately going to have to determine who ends up with the team. We talk a lot about courtroom dramas. We certainly have the last few days in the O.J. Simpson death and the case and the trial and everything that came with it. I'm not a attorney, obviously. I'm not a great legal mind. But I have to imagine if that evidence was presented in this forum, it would be thrown out as inadmissible. When it comes to this. And irrelevant. Irrelevant and admissible. And inadmissible evidence, yeah. And that will be stricken from the record. Yeah. The jury will disregard what they just heard from Glenn Taylor. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an attempt to prejudice the case. But that's not what the case is supposed to be about. And that's why I continue to be very suspicious of Glenn, even though I get it. Either they have the money or they don't. And ultimately, that has to be the determination here. I don't trust Glenn on this either. I don't. I, I, I find this hard to root for anybody. To answer your question about the reason. poll, 80-20 yeah. is the first nugget that jumped out to okay. me. 80, just because of how long Glenn's been here, how excited people were about yes. the new guys. And as stupid as it sounds, we joke about the KG thing. People want KG back. They do. They do. Which it shouldn't matter, but it does. No, it doesn't. But the, the, there's always been something tricky about that. All of us want KG back in the family, right? I mean, how could you not? But the notion that anybody, Flip, um, the new owners, whatever, would then be obligated to give him a great deal of authority is another matter entirely. I okay? don't even know thinking about that. No, one. but but some people do, yeah. and I think Glenn, and I think sometimes I think KG still does, and that that part of it is I think a little bit more uh, uh, more concerning. Go get him. Uh, by the way, you mentioned you uh, we spent a decent amount of time in the OJ case yesterday. I, ha I had a post script script I wanted to get to. Today, because there was obviously a big racial component to the story, and we talked about how different audiences reacted differently to the verdict itself. Also, you know, an important issue. Um, if I look back, though, and I remember this very clearly, at the front end of this deal, before the trial became a phenomenon, maybe even before the trial began, my recollection is that for a number of African Americans, they were conflicted about the degree to which they wanted to root for or go to bat for OJ because of the nation's history when it comes to railroaded uh, black defendants, et cetera, et cetera. 
Do you remember why? It was because many felt that OJ, in crossing over, so to speak, had not continued to devote enough attention to, quote unquote, the cause. And that's a piece of this that I think has gotten either rewritten or forgotten. Now, ultimately, when it came down to it, I think it, it went back to a, a very different line of thinking for many minorities. But in the early days, it was like, well, I, I don't look upon him. I don't, I'm not even sure I look upon him as black because of whether it was even fair to OJ, the perception being that he kind of sold out and he became a little bit more milk toast and was not really ever involved enough in many of the causes of the day. That was a, a an essential piece early in the discussion. Um, I mean, in fact, the the analogy holds, if you recall when Barack Obama first ascended and became a threat to become the nominee. Even in the African-American community there, there was a split. There was, remember, remember the joke about, well, uh, Bill Clinton's already been, he's the first black president because of a belief that he had been uh, more, he had been committed for a longer period of time to many of the causes that were important to people. And ultimately it changed with Barack Obama and to a certain extent, maybe he won a lot of minorities over as well. But with OJ, there was there was that period where it was well, yeah. What, 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 why do I? What, you know, the idea that I should, you know, sort of reflexively, regardless of the evidence in the case, uh, reflexively go to bat or be rooting for OJ um, was not as simple as it seemed by at the end of the case when you saw the, those 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 videos of. Largely black audiences cheering, standing and cheering when the verdict came in as not guilty for OJ on all charges. Along those lines, so much so, were they worried about his standing in the black community? I remember this vividly from Made in America, the documentary series. And I just double checked the attorney's name who was featured that worked with Johnny Cochran, not Johnny Cochran, but Carl E. Douglas. I remember him well. Great voice, great personality, great. was an unbelievable storyteller through that whole thing. When they did the infamous field trip to the house... They staged the house. Great memory. And took out, because he didn't have any pictures with any black people. They added a bunch of quote-unquote black art. It was crazy. That's correct. And he admitted to it. He goes, yes. we, we, we swept the whole house yes. clean. That's and right. And said, just because that's not what he was, that's not what he had in his house. That that wasn't it, who it, he was. It wasn't who he was. That's the truth of it. That's right. And he was very, like, hilarious about it. You know, just basically saying, like, yeah, we fooled him. You know, we tri- yeah, it right. It was 100% by design. We walked through and go, well, we It was can't. a big part of that part of the of the special, of that series. You're exactly right. That's a good recall. 100%. But, so that, that to your point, yeah. I think, furthers it a little bit on what how that whole thing shifted as the trial went on. Uh, Bradshaw and Brian K. Fan text line is open, 64686. Don't want, Dan, I don't want Taylor, but he's had his chance to run Wolves and has proven to be a losing owner. A-Rod may want to reduce payroll. Trading cat would get them under the cap, which may not be ideal, but I need Taylor gone. If KG joined A-Rod, that would be interesting. That's from Scooter T. Um, uh, Glenn Taylor is a deadbeat owner who never did anything for the franchise, and now that we're a bit successful, he wants back in. I want him out. Lawyer Tom, Dan, here's the big rub. Lori's new gig is upscale restaurant delivery. Problem. Regular restaurant delivery services haven't figured out yet how to make money. None of them. So he could go broke. Big, big risk. And Wolves could be paupers of the association for decades going forward with him. Well, he would have to sell at that point. He he would, and I think even his that company has already changed a little bit into actual restaurants. Now, has with all this turmoil... Has Lori renounced Tolosa and the Tolosa dream? Where's that stand? I haven't heard much about Tolosa no. lately. Is that like just gone away? It or seems is it like on the it's back lost burner? a little bit of the momentum that we had early. Remember all the Tolosa stuff? Yes. He's doing videos and there were presentations. Town halls. And we quoted from Town Hall. Yeah, Tolosa. we had Town Hall meetings Tolosa in Brooklyn. Town halls. Yeah, we signed on to it. Oh, my goodness. You filled out the survey. We did it live on the air. A Rod should bring a chicken with him. That's a glue gal callback, it correct? Is. It is. Jason from Egan, it's such a hard call to pick. On one hand, you have a top five worst owner ever. 
in professional sports, and the other are two shady characters with no money. Obviously, it's the Wolves <laughs> <laughs> that only have these. Meanwhile, the options. team's incredible and trying That's to win it. the Western Conference. That's it. <laughs> it's just. Uh, oh. It would have been 80% new guys until the payroll cut info was revealed. Now we're scared to death of both scenarios. 612 guys, right? That's why it was absolutely purposefully leaked yes. by the Taylor side. No they, doubt. they saw, he saw how it was going from a public relations standpoint, said, this will get the attention of fans. Payroll cut? Or I should say, yeah, payroll cut or under the cap, even though, as Johnny has confirmed with us, we don't know definitely that that's what the Wolves would do. We, but we also don't know actually what Glenn Taylor would do. Right. There are some significant payroll questions moving forward. And ultimately, the, the answer from A-Rod, if once uh, Leo B. Olson asks him about this courtside tonight between the first and second quarters, <laughs> is they can say, well, a lot of this is, depends on what we do this. this if we... If we make it to the conference finals or the NBA finals, are you kidding me? Do you think yeah. we're suddenly going to go cheap on the bit? Right. Now, if we lose in the first round and Cat doesn't have a great series, eh, all bets might be off at that point. We may say we need to, to – we know we got a good core, but we might need to make a change. Tim Conley might believe we need to make a bit. That's the guy we're leaving out of this thing. He's the guy in charge of the basketball operation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The thing that never – I've never been as scared of the luxury tax and second apron deal as other people have been. Well, you don't have to live it. I don't have to live it, but I also, you look around the league, most You te- wouldn't look good in a second day. I don't even think you'd look good in a first apron. I wouldn't know how to tie it, first no, that's of all. True. I'd have issues tying it. Second apron would be bad. I never worry too much about it because at some point, Rudy's going to come off of those books. You know, He's got two years left after this. And who knows what he's going to be in two years. So I never worried yeah, about his right. whatever 40 plus million dollars. But you look around the league, including what's going on in Golden State now. They Part of the reason why Bob Myers, to many people's chagrin, was on the call of the ESPN broadcast the other night. He wasn't very good. Is because he didn't want to make these calls that you have to make eventually. Yeah, right. After you've spent essentially half a decade he got in out of dodge. Tax. Right on time. He did the Terry Ryan before yeah. he had to trade yeah. you know, Tory and before he had to trade Johan. But the point is... Why the Warriors have so many difficult decisions here recently is because they spent over the cap into the luxury tax. Like, that's what you do when you have a contending team. Yes. You don't worry about it. Like, you're going to have to pay it, but you're financing a championship team. A lot of these teams have yeah. done that. We're small market, though, and we have a, we, a, Understood. a, a really small, you know, paltry TV local, con, TV, local deal. TV deal. So, I, but I've never, that has never scared me as much because it's a good problem to have if you have a team that's good that, you want to keep together. Yeah. Now, to your point, if the team's no good and you don't feel like you can contend, then then obviously you have some decisions to make. But I still, I'm not convinced it would still be cat. By the way, that would no, go. it's not automatic yeah, at all. It no, would, to me, it would. There's be, a lot of ways to. If you're to, building it, you have to probably yes. move Rudy at some point. We know you wouldn't get any. We wouldn't get return move, on that. You're moving him to move him. You're moving right, him to move for the him. money. And the reason why Tim Conley just got back from that European yep. scouting trip is because you're hoping to get a couple of good players in the second round where all your picks are. My sources say he's found a couple of studs. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're already... We're, 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 we're like two, three steps ahead. Long game. That's why you got to keep Conley. Somebody said that. A uh, 612 guy. Key question is who Conley wants to own the team. We cannot lose him. Please ask him, Dan. Next time I have him on, I will. I'll ask him. He won't answer. Right. Uh, because he really, it, it, it would be too much of a headline. I, I do believe this after texting back and forth with Tim. Uh, I'm not going to give all of our conversation away, but I do think that he is a guy, and this is, this is, I think, something to respect about him. He literally is 100% happy if the camera never finds him an entire season. Yeah. I, I really believe that. He is most comfortable... Behind the scenes. He's he got a, a need, Mark Coyle gene. It, well, that's true. He doesn't need any of that stuff. He doesn't want it. He 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 just wants to go about the business of trying to, you know, establish success with this uh with this particular program. But it's an important question. There's no question about that. Is there any possibility that Kathy Cargill could buy the Wolves and the rebound? And then ban, as one of our textures says, anyone from Duluth from attending any games. Let's we'll take it a step further. How do we know she hadn't planned on buying them yeah. and moving the team to Duluth at Park Point, and that's why she was buying all that land so that she could have an arena? 
She's got the money. Yes. I mean, that's real money, is it not? How have a couple Cargo Cargo's money is not real money? Up. It's there. You add all the it's, billionaires it's, yeah. in the state together, and you still don't touch them. I think it probably the entire Midwest. Possibly, it's possible. Depends if you count Their Omaha. Money. It was Warren well, Buffett lives there. That's true. That's a good. Point. So I don't know. <laughs> is that where he lives? Yeah, Berkshire. Well, I don't know if he lives there, but that's where Berkshire Hathaway okay, is. The offices. Right. Yeah. I'm guessing Warren has a couple of places. If A-Rod wins, they will want the state to pay for a new arena or they will threaten to move the team. That's possible. But there's nowhere to move them because the NBA ain't moving a team. No, They're but expanding. it could get dicier and maybe, Glenn, it would be better at playing that game or not expecting uh, that part of the Hey, Glenn said uh, your guy Royce a few weeks ago, he doesn't think there's anything wrong with Target Center. He did? He said he might need a few things, but I... He I obviously hasn't spent a lot of time in the upper deck. That's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, that's. I was looking today just at playoff tickets, just in general. Yeah. There are seats center court in the upper deck, like not way up, mm -hmm. like first five, six, seven, eight rows that have a limited view because of stairs or. Really? Yeah. They're just, and not a lot, not a lot of them. Yeah, but the fact but there's that anywhere in the anywhere, second yeah. deck, mid court. Well, we've talked about this before, right? It, I think it's been confirmed. Target Center became the cautionary tale in that it was the first arena in which there were more seats in the upper deck yes. than in the main bowl. Because Harv and Marv's right. point they, was we they want wanted, to make it accessible yes. for yes. people. We want to have enough cheap tickets. I mean, they had good intentions. Definitely. But it ended up being a big mistake that has never been duplicated largely because around the country, maybe around the world, people look at, no, see what they did at Target Center? That can't work. That's not the formula for success. You can't have more seats upstairs than you do downstairs. I was just in Phoenix, as you know, and we went to the Suns-Wolves game. I think it's called Footprint Center now. It used to be Talking Stick Arena. It used to be America right. West Airlines Center. I don't know when that was built, but it, I don't think it's a necessarily new arena. It it's seems not, like it's been around a while. I don't think it is, no. Their upper deck has like 12 rows. And I'm so used to Target Center, and even the X, I think, has more than than Phoenix does, but I'm... I'm looking there and I'm looking up and you got the lower level and then you've got like the suites and the clubs and some landing areas and things like that. And the upper deck is maybe 15 rows. And it just, it's stunning to see it when you frame it. Well, what kind of shape does it seem to be in? It's fine. Yeah. It, it wasn't anything great. It's obviously right. aged. I mean, their concourses aren't great. You know, I think they're in the same predicament that target centers in. You're trying to make different clubs and different areas out of existing spots. But just the upper deck just struck me in relation to yeah. Target Center because the upper deck, as we know at Target Center, is monstrous. And like you said, good intentions, but not ideal when you're trying to make money and provide a great experience for a lot of different people. Ben Gessling in a half hour, Russo Radio in an hour, Lavelle E. Neal III will join at 530.